morning, Facebook. It is a beautiful day, and I trust that you are ready to go this morning and uh, see what God has in store for us. Uh, I want to close out this week with a very special thought for the day. We've been talking about the promises of God that we find in His Word, some very special promises that uh, He made to His people. And he, you remember we've been talking about those promises as he relates them to sheep because we are the sheep of his pasture. We are his flock. Well, this morning, I want to go to what I call the end of the story. Now, understand that a lot of people are afraid of the book of Revelation. Uh, they don't understand it. It's too scary. It's too whatever it might be. But I think that when you recognize what the true title of that wonderful book is, it begins to open your eyes to what is really there. Because the true title of this uh, book is the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the unveiling of who Jesus is. And in chapter 7 of the book of Revelation, John talks about Jesus. And he describes him for us. He unveils him to us. And what he calls him is the lamb, the lamb. Now, that's appropriate because the Bible tells us that Jesus is the perfect lamb. He's the lamb that died on the cross of Calvary as a sacrifice for our sins. But now, when we come to the book of Revelation, he's still the lamb, but he's the lamb seated on the throne of heaven. And that's an amazing image that I cannot wait to see for myself. But when you come down to verse 17 of John chapter 7, John, or Revelation chapter 7, John describes Jesus as doing two things, which I believe are the fulfillment of all the promises God has ever made to his people. From the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, I think that in verse 17, we see the, the fulfillment of all the promises. Because the first thing that John says is that the Lamb will shepherd his people and lead them to living fountains of waters. Now, do you see that? He will shepherd his people and lead them to living fountains of water. For the sake of time, let me just say that the, the people that Jesus shepherds in this passage are those who have become believers in the end times, those times that we call the great tribulation. And I believe that after the rapture of the church and Antichrist comes to power on the earth, that, that God is going to send his spirit down and he's going to work in, in ways that will draw men and women to himself. And the, the sad thing is these new believers will face martyrdom because of their faith in Jesus Christ. They'll be put to death simply because they are followers of Jesus. But this is a promise that I believe applies to the rest of his flock too, because he's still the good shepherd of the 23rd Psalm. And it's exactly what the good shepherd does for his flock. He shepherds his flock. He guides them to living fountains of waters. And I think that's a, a beautiful picture because these believers have given up their lives for Jesus. So what does he do? He takes them in turn to the fountains of water that will give them life everlasting. Now that reminds me of another promise, a promise that Jesus made in the Gospels. He tells us that he is the living water and all that partake of him will never die. Yes, he, he's making a promise to all who follow him that they will live forever with him. Now, let's be honest. We know that believers are going to die physically unless Jesus returns before that day comes for us. But spiritually, they live for eternity with him. What a promise. But there's a second promise in this verse. It's a good one too. At the end of verse 17, John writes this. He says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now, understand he makes that same promise for all believers in Revelation 21.4. In chapter 7, he's talking to the tribulation saints. In 21.4, he's talking about all believers. And he tells us that when that happens, there'll be no more death. There'll be no more sorrow, no crying, no pain. Oh, listen, in this crazy time that we're living in, isn't it a great promise that when that day comes, there'll be no more coronavirus, no more fear? No more anxiety or depression. There'll be no more tears because the one who loves us more than life itself has conquered all of those things through his life and his death. 
and his resurrection from the tomb. Now, those are some wonderful promises, but I know that people are hurting right now. And even though there seems to be a glimmer of light at the end of this dark tunnel of social distancing and self-quarantine, we need to keep in mind that it's going to be months before life truly gets back to even some semblance of normalcy. Yes, I know that the president has laid out his plan to reopen the economy and the governor is talking about the end of the month. She'll be sharing her plan with us. But I need you to understand that the stresses that everyone is going through right now, the things that they're facing today, those things aren't going to go away overnight. We need to be aware more people are going to be diagnosed with COVID-19. More people are going to die. But let me give you a word of hope this morning. The Good Shepherd is walking this path with his people. And I know that I have enjoyed his presence tremendously in this past month as we've been journeying through these difficult days. And I want you to understand this morning, I would consider it a great honor if you, if you're really struggling today, if you're one of those that has tears in your eyes today because of the fear and the anxiety and the sadness and the grief that you're dealing with, I would consider it a great honor if you let me help you walk through this valley to show you how you can experience the same peace that I have. I'd love to talk to you and, and show you how you can know the Good Shepherd too. If you want to talk to me, just comment below this post. Go to our website at www.fbcdadeville.com. My email address is there. My contact information is there. And, and just tell me what God, uh, what, what you need. And I promise you, I can show you how God can help you through this. Well, I hope you have a great day today. And remember, our God one day is going to wipe away all those tears. Until then, God bless.